Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great. Finally, we're back with another OpenGL tutorial. And today, we're going to be working with the material class. So, I got a few, I got a few uh, comments on my videos. Um, and I just want to tell you guys that I'm not the best OpenGL teacher, okay? There are plenty of teachers better than me out there. This is just my way of teaching it. I hope it works out for you guys. I'm really sorry if, if I if I say something that's a little that differs from something you've been taught or, or something like that. I'm really sorry about that. And I'll, I'll try not to to do that and uh, try to be as, as clean as possible. And uh, I'm not that good, as I said, because I haven't worked with OpenGL so much that I'm, I'm a professional or anything like that. But I, I just know how to work with it. I've been I've been working with it for a while and uh, hopefully I can show you at least the techniques, something something to think about. And, and maybe the implementation isn't a perfect and you can you can fix that by yourself but at least the idea of it and what you can do hopefully you can find that here and I'm really grateful for all the all the support uh, also I got a comment on uh, actually dividing the code up into into parts and it's a really valid comment and uh, I really don't like having all the code in main like I said before but I hopefully you can see that I'm I've started to do that I've started to make classes and today we're gonna make another class and just divide up everything and eventually main is not gonna have anything it's just gonna be a game class very cleanly separated and you'll see why and how you should have stuff in certain positions and I'm, I'm sure you'll find better solutions uh, in your in your own time um, but but this at least I'll show you one solution and again I'm really grateful for all the support so I'm not complaining I'm just I'm just saying uh, but let's just jump right into it so what we need to do today what we're gonna do also, we're going to divide everything up into functions in the next video in the shaders. And I'll show you how to make functions in here. But what we need to do is the idea of a material class. Let's just talk about that. A material class will contain the texture for an object. For a mesh, it will contain the specular texture, the colors, everything you need in a class. So it should it should be like a you'll have the mesh, which is just your vertex data. It's like bare bones, just the object shape. And then the material class is there to supply all the visual data, like all the beautiful colors and what color, how, how much it should shine, it should be metal, it should be clay, stuff like that. So, so different types of intensities of, and colors and textures. But one problem we have is that we haven't created a mesh class yet. Okay, we'll be doing that in the future soon. But for now, we don't. So I want you to imagine there only being one mesh right now. This model mesh thing here is our mesh. So everything here is going to be our mesh. It, it's a Pusheen and the container PNG. This isn't correct. Actually, we'll have a Pusheen PNG and a Pusheen specular PNG. Okay. A Pusheen specular PNG is going to be when we talk about specular mapping. So the reason I'm going to make a specular texture, I don't want you to get confused and freak out. Just don't think about it too much right now um, and just go with the flow. But for now, we'll reserve two texture positions and we won't be using this in this way um, but let's just go into it so all of this is going to be contained in a in a mesh class anyway let's go ahead and get started so the first step is to make a struct in your fragment core GLSL and GLSL is a C based language so it's very much like C so you can make structs in here which are basically like classes and we want to call it material Okay, and we'll make it really simple. We'll have three colors, vec3, ambient, vec, uh, sorry, vec3, diffuse, vec3, specular. And the colors are colors and intensities. So ambient is going to be a color and the intensity of the color. So you don't need different um, floats and stuff for the intensities. Anyway, uh, then, then what you need is a sampler 2d for the texture remember just like this and you want to call it diffuse text like that diffuse text like that sampler 2d remember this is for the future specular text I'll just put it in right now just so you know it should be there and then you have a bunch of different bump mappings and all that those techniques that we'll talk about later but for now diffuse and specular Ambient, diffuse, specular. These are the colors and intensities. Remember that. These are the textures. And so this is going to be our real color data. These are going to be used more for modifying that. Um, and I'll show you that in an example when we're finished. 
So now we have our material struct. Now how are we going to use this? We're sending in data and colors and stuff through uniforms. So why not use a uniform for a whole material? Uniform. So this is going to be the material of the object that we are going to render. And this material has uh, a name, obviously material, and it's going to have different um, different members. So all of these are members to material. So we can write material material dot ambient, for example, and we'll get out the ambient for this spec uh, this specific material. So that's how we're going to send that through uniforms, and I'll show you that as well. So just remember, this is important, and we're going to be changing stuff here uh, shortly. Um, so what we'll do is we'll make a new class. Let's make a new item, a new header file, call it material. There you go, pragma once. Um, and there we go. Remember, if you're working with, if you haven't watched the older videos, please do. But if you're working with a code blocks or something, you don't want to use pragma once. This is only for Visual Studio. Again, I'll say that again. Uh, you want to use if not define, define, and all that stuff. But for Visual Studio, Pragma once is fine. So go ahead into your texture class, your your texture class probably. Let's see what we need. We're gonna need to use the glue and GLFL. We're gonna need these. Uh, let me just copy. We're gonna need Vec3 and everything. Let me just copy all of this in here and we'll remove some stuff. Material. We'll remove F stream and string. We don't need those. IO stream we don't need. Glue we need. GLM, Vec2, Vec3, all of these we might need later on. Type pointer might not need, but might need in the future, whatever. So we'll make a class material. And we'll make a material material constructor. And there we go, material constructor. And remember, this is a class, so public. And then we have the private. So what do we need? Now, this is a very important part. You need to completely and utterly duplicate this. Because remember, we're going to be sending in stuff to the shader. And it needs to be exactly the same to get all the data it needs. So the material, we need exactly the same stuff. So the GLM, we just need to add GLM to all of these. GLM, and this needs to be a GL int. GL int. GL int like that. So we have uh, everything converted. Everything is exactly identical, but it's converted into C++ now. So this is our C++ counterpart of that. And the way we need to do this is we need to do uh, GLM and we'll just copy paste everything here actually. No, wait, just need to copy paste all of this in here. So that's our parameters. We're going to be sending these in and commas like that this ambient equals ambient now this is really tedious but bear with me diffuse equals diffuse this specular equals specular this diffuse texture equals diffuse texture and this specular text equals specular texture so we can make a material out of these and uh, create it through, yeah, just put them in through a constructor. And then we need a material um, destructor as well. You don't have to define this, but I always like to define my destructors in case. I can do this actually, there we go, there we go. And then we have the functions, and the only function we need right now is to send all of these to the shader. So we need to make a function void send to shader and then we need a shader id glint shader id or program id program id and then what we're going to do is we're just going to send all of these to the program id. So um, we're going to need to bind the shader and then unbind it. 
And what we could do, we could include shader here, actually. You know what we could do? We could do this. Include shader.h. Include, um, include, uh, what's it called? Texture.h. And we could call this texture and texture like that. So we'll have two textures here. And then, but well actually, then we'll need to copy them. You know, that's better. But the, the shader is enough. Shader is enough. There we go. We'll play around with that later. They don't have to think about it too much. Um, but uh, send to shader. So what we're going to do is we're going to do shader here instead. Shader reference program ID or program. And then we're going to say program dot set vec3 and we're gonna say now this is the interesting part because remember these are identical okay the struct and the shader is identical remember how we could say material dot ambient and material dot diffuse material that's how we access them right that's their names so in the C++ part to send them as as uniforms you need to give it the exact name. So material dot something something. So this ambient is gonna go into material dot ambient. Okay, because remember, for this object, this material um, variable is what we need to send it to. So material and the ambient part. So material dot ambient. So that's how we're sending it. Now we need to send all the other ones as well. Program diffuse specular diffuse remember to spell it correctly here just the way you spelt it in here so you don't get any issues and then we want to say program dot set one f the one i and this diffuse texture want to set it to ma material dot diffuse Texture, text, and I want to say program dot set, or I could just copy this, just like this. Specular, like that. So there we go. Now this is a function that can send everything to the shader, no problems, easy peasy, and we can create a material. Now let me go ahead in lips and just. Include it, include material.h. Now, we don't need to include shader and texture here, or shader, because I included it in material, but I'll still go ahead and do it. It's not a good thing to do. I don't know what I just did. Okay, there we go. Uh, but still, it's a good thing to not do that, but uh, you can if you want to. So now we have a material class. And um, what can we do? We included it into libs. Okay, so now, if I run this program, we shouldn't have any crashes. Oh god. Uh, let's see what happened. I think it's the fragment. Core? I think. Okay, yeah, that was the issue. Remember the semicolon after the material struct. Remember this so so valuable or it's gonna freak out uh, anyway am I still recording yep to not make this video too long let's just jump right into it let's make a material object here uh, remember this whole model mesh is one cat so in the future we're gonna make a model or a mesh class and then they'll all have their own material their own vertices their own everything but for now we just have one and we can only work with one so don't be confused and there are two textures in this one uh, so let me just go ahead so we created two textures. Now we're going to create a material zero. So material, material zero, and it should have glm vec3 uh, 0.1f. Remember, this is the ambient glm vec3 1.f for the diffuse glm vec3 uh, 1.f for the specular intensity and everything, specular color. And then we'll say texture zero dot 
get texture unit. Remember, not the ID. You want the texture unit. Texture one dot get texture. Now, again, texture one is not actually the specular texture for this whole cat, and I'll explain it when we talk about specular mapping. But for now, just just put it in there. Why not? Why not? It wants a texture. We'll just put it in there. Doesn't matter. Um, so there we go. Now we have the material. Now I'm, I'm sorry if you hear me a little worse now. I have the microphone a little further away from me. I put it closer. Uh, anyway. So there we go. Now we have our material class. What we want to do is every time we draw this object, we want to set the materials stuff just like this in update uniform. So material zero dot set. Oh, whoops. Send to shader. What the hell, man? Send to shader. Core program. So we're sending it to the core program. And every time we do that, we update for that object in that shader. Uh, so there we go. Now we're going to use the shader for this object. And this should be fine. Now it should work. It shouldn't crash. There we go. It still doesn't crash. Now if I start changing things in here now why did I send it into material now when we have the material we can use it for everything we'll, we'll set the ambient light instead of some uh, constant here we'll say material dot ambient because we're pretty sure that it was sent from CPU to GPU and then we'll say material dot diffuse here instead of the diffuse color material dot diffuse and this diffuse value is just the angle and how much the color should be, the intensity, and th this isn't something that should come from the material. This is this is the color of the diffuse, and this is the specular intensity. So, so material, sorry, material that's specular, like that. And uh, yeah, if I run this, we shouldn't die. We should be fine. It's still working. And to show you that it's working, let me go into main again. And wherever we created this damn material let's put zero in the diffuse part so 0, 0, 0. see our diffuse is zero our ambient is 0 0.1 and the specular is one what if I set it to the specular to two that should crash actually should yeah it shouldn't do anything much it got stronger see how it got stronger it got stronger if I set the specular to zero and run it we don't have any specular only diffuse see so that's how you can control the intensity now if I want to change the color of the cat I'll set it to 0 0.5 F here so this is a diffuse color I'm giving it a diffuse color and an intensity at the same time see how it's a little more reddish now see so I changed the whole hue of the of the cat just like that but this is how we had it now I'm sending in textures as well I'm sending in textures as well and I want to use those textures so instead of texture 0 what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do material dot diffuse text just like that multiplied by VS color the the rainbowish color and if I run this we shouldn't have any issues whatsoever nope see it still found the texture and I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna run this then we won't have the rainbowish hue we'll only have the cat texture just like that and we can use the specular texture as well that's just a box but still it's there right there so no issues no issues whatsoever I'll still want the rainbow shit though uh, there we go now we can remove these two textures and only have material um, yeah and only have the material and from main I'm gonna remove setting the textures in here at all uh, where is it where is it where is it where is it texture we don't need those um, because when we set it let me just think when we set it binding a texture is actually setting so we don't need to do that uh, core program use okay there we go. So we use the program. We want to actually update the uniforms. Um, down there. Right before we draw it. We want to update the uniform. So I'm just going to send that down. 
And as we send it to shader, we actually set the, we bind the textures as well, I think. No, we don't. Let me see. So what it needs to do, it needs to bind the texture as well as it sends it. Um, so, but the uniform, the actual object should do that on its own. Let me just revert back to how we had it and activate the textures like this because what that does is sends it to the shader let me run this and that works that works fine okay that works fine when you bind it let's just go into textures before I end the video let me just see what happens we actually bind it you activate texture unit 0 okay you activate texture unit 0 okay yeah that needs to happen um, or bind texture unit Activate texture unit. Yeah, this has to happen in as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to this when we get into the mesh class. Don't worry about it. Whew. But for now, we are done, ladies and gentlemen. We have a material class. Experiment. Play around with it. Remember to change all the variables. Play around with it. And have fun. And you should be you should be fine. You should be good to go. And we'll flesh this out as we get into the material class or the mesh class. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something today. I hope you, it all went well. If you have any issues, problems, you can ask me. I know a few of you have some problems, and I'm trying to get to those problems and look at code, but I have so much stuff to do, so I haven't had the time, but I'll try to try to do it. If you have problems, please go check out the GitHub page, copy, paste the code, try to, try to find the difference and try to figure it out on your own, because I wish I had more time to help you guys individually, but I don't, sadly, because there's a lot of things I have to do for my own schooling and stuff not to sound all pompous and shit I don't mean it that way I just say I'm just saying that I have some stuff to do and I can't really look into code right now uh, but yeah again thanks for watching take care best of luck and I'll see you guys in the next one all right bye bye